In a previous CNC video, I demonstrated a $15 update I used to give Mach 3 full spindle control of a normally manual only spindle while retaining manual control when Mach 3 is idle. That spindle on this 3040T router using a brushed motor has performed adequately in the projects I have completed with it so far. However, I can envision projects which are going to push it much harder, and I'd like an extra bit of capacity. So I chose to update to a spindle with a brushless motor. The benefits of that change have vastly exceeded my expectations. From my radio control electric helicopter hobby, I am well aware of the significant benefits that brushless motors bring to bear, being quieter, more efficient, and providing more power throughout the RPM range. But here, there are even more benefits available, like an ER16 collet versus the ER11 used before, which allows end mills with 3 8 inch shanks, a 10 millimeter motor shaft, and closed loop control. The latter will fight to keep the spindle from bogging down by ramping up the power to maintain the target RPM when not operating at max, versus bogging down as the original brush spindle will do, especially at low RPMs. The 10 millimeter shaft will reduce flex, as will the 3 8 inch shanks, allowing for more accurate tracking during difficult cuts. But that also means I'm more likely to break some mills, as I've seen the entire length of a 1 8 inch mill flex against the workpiece when running the gantry a bit too far while setting a zero point. Thus, I'll need to exercise better care during job setup. This video will hopefully help others looking to upgrade a 3040T USB router. The prior PSU was a dual voltage unit providing 48 volts at 336 watts as well as 24 volts. It was actually not adequate for the old spindle and needed to be replaced, especially so now with a higher capacity spindle. But I could not find another dual voltage unit with a higher capacity at 48 volts. So I replaced it with a 600 watt PSU with 48 volts single output and a high capacity 48 volt to 24 volt bulk converter has been attached for the 24 volt components. For consistency, and continuity with the last video, I have reset the added components uh, back to their state and location as shown at the end of that video. By the way, I did not mention in that last video that this prior update also allows the spindle to be stopped with the emergency stop button under Mach 3 control. This did not happen as originally supplied, which can be found in a lot of comments as a negative of these economy units. The motor driver has been installed in the vacant fourth slot, as I only have a three 
axis unit. If you have a four axis unit, then the motor driver would need to go elsewhere. My upgrade components from the prior video had been mounted in this location, so I'll have to figure out how to repackage those safely. Next, I remove the potentiometer that came attached to the motor driver and installed a connector as was used to connect to the PSU in the old update. And then I simply had to plug that new connector into the previous uh, connector from the update. Now there is an al alternate choice for the speed control signal here. The new motor driver can accept the PWM input from the bit sensor board directly at the zero to 10 volt control pin input. And so a connector can go from here to here. Uh, but I chose to retain the switch speed signal from my previous update because this provides exclusive control via the pot or via Mach 3 and not both at the same time. With this, you now have spindle speed control both manually and with Mach 3. And you can do the same with Mach 3. Success feels good, right? Now, this motor driver also has a PG pin which provides a six pulse per revolution signal, which can be made available to Mach 3 via one of the input pins on the bit sensor board. I did it selecting input 2. However, my results have not been reliable. So I will not detail the matching Mach 3 configuration changes for that at this time. However, success is still sweet, eh? Ultimately, I need to figure out the packaging, but it works. Getting all of the bits and pieces back into the case should be relatively easy. A huge job would be to consolidate the driver and sense cables with the original DB25 cable. I will end the demonstration by showing the huge advantage of a closed loop brushless spindle control. Watch what happens at a sedate 500 rpm i could easily use my naked hand with the old spindle to do this but not with this one 
listen to how the power ramps up. Amazing. I think I can successfully set proper drill speeds with my regular high speed drill bits with this unit. And I will see. That's it. Hopefully you can find some value in this video. Happy see and seeing. The video will end with the first cuts done with the new spindle.